All right, so this is probably going to be the most math heavy video, unfortunately, uh, because attitude dynamics is pretty complex. Um, where's my satellite? You, uh, your satellite is, is, is tumbling, it's rotating all about three axes. I mean, it, this problem would be super simple if it just rotated about one axis, but the problem is, is again, it's, it's rotating about all three. And uh, you've got inertia and multiple particles, and sometimes you have spinning reaction wheels on the inside, so things get kind of complex. Okay, so ignore the right half side of the board here for a second. Let's just focus on the right on the right hand side. Uh, the simplest way to parameterize attitude is by using what's called whoops, is by using what's called Euler angles. And Euler angles are typically defined as psi, theta, and phi. Uh, I'll talk about this diagram in a second, but I just want to show you this roadmap here. What you basically do is, if let's assume this red axis is is uh, the z-axis. You're going to do a finite rotation about the z-axis uh, through an angle psi. So if psi was 45, you would rotate to here. You're then going to take the y-axis, the new y-axis, and rotate about that axis through theta. The pitch angle. So this is yaw, pitch, psi, theta, and then you're going to take the new x-axis here and you're going to rotate through an angle phi or roll. So you're going to rotate through roll. And so you're going to go yaw z, theta y, roll x. And that will put your satellite in any rotation. I can, you know, put the satellite in a rotation and I can decompose the rotation to get me back to the inertial frame, okay? And that is essentially what you're trying to do with parameterization. It's say, take my inertial frame and rotate me to my body frame. So it's a transformation from inertial to a body frame because the body frame is fixed to the satellite while the inertial frame sits at the center of the earth and does not move. And so I need a way to go from the inertial frame to the body frame and that's psi theta phi, okay? Now, this, that's, this diagram is essentially trying to do that. So if you look here, this is the y-axis, the x-axis, the z-axis is pointing down. I am rotating about the z-axis, so my x-axis and y-axis rotate through psi. Then I take my new y-axis and I rotate through theta, and that changes my z-axis and my x-axis. And then I finally rotate through phi, along the x-axis. So again, psi, theta, phi, okay? Now the problem is, is that you also need angular velocity. So if I defi def define uh, P, Q, and R as the uh, R is the yaw rate, so that's how fast I'm spinning about this axis, the pitch rate, which is how fast I'm spinning about this axis, and then P, the roll rate, is how fast I'm spinning about this axis. So roll rate, pitch rate, yaw rate. Those rates, these are radians per second, are expressed in the body frame. This is a vector in space. Psi, theta, and phi are not vectors. They are parameters that move you from one frame to another. And so if you take a derivative, remember these psi, theta, phi are radians. If you take a derivative, you're going to get radians per second. If you try and create a relationship between phi dot, theta dot, and psi dot, the derivative of roll, derivative of pitch, derivative of yaw, and create some matrix inverse to get you to P, Q, and R, which is in the body frame, you're gonna get this uh, aircraft notation uses a matrix called H. What's gonna happen is, is that you're gonna find a point where if theta is equal to 90 degrees, this inverse breaks down. And let me show you why. Let's imagine, let me write this down. Let's imagine that psi is equal to 90, theta is equal to 90, and phi is equal to 90, okay? Let's do that. So I'm gonna do psi 90, theta 90, and then phi 90. Now, if you look at the look at look real closely, take a screenshot if you have to at how I'm rotating this. Now, say I'm in the body frame, and like say say I put this behind my back and I pull it out, 
and I say, this is the body frame, get me to the inertial frame. I'm going to look at it and say, well, that's easy. You just do this, right? And now you're at the inertial frame. But that would mean that phi was 0, psi was 0, and theta was 90, which means you actually have a orientation where the inverse of going from the body frame to the inertial frame is not unique. And when things are not unique, the determinant of this matrix breaks down, the inverse does not exist, and this whole thing goes away. And you can't use this anymore. Okay? If you are an airplane, most airplanes do not go theta 90. They don't fly straight up. If you're an F-16 or an F-22 or an F-35, a fighter aircraft, fine. But a Boeing 777, if you're flying straight up, you know, pray because uh, bad things are about to happen, right? Most airplanes stay plus or minus 20 degrees, maybe, maybe 30 at the most on, on like really steep takeoffs. So you can use these if you're using an aircraft that's not a, a serious fighter aircraft. For spacecraft, unfortunately, when you get shoved out of the pea pod on your sounding rocket, you're going to be tumbling about all axes. Theta is going to go right through pi over 2, right through 90 degrees. And so unfortunately, what I've been using since I was in grad school is something called quaternions. I don't know how quaternions work very well. All I know is that there are four parameters instead of three, and they are Q0, 1, 2, and 3. That's a Q3 right there. There is a equation, and I'm not going to write it on the board because it's really complex. I'll show you in a video. But there's an equation where you can take quaternions and convert them to Euler angles, and you can take Euler angles and convert them to quaternions. Now remember, because of that singularity, there is going to be a point where two Euler angles are going to give you the same quaternion. And that, but, but that's just that's fine, because um, that's just kind of how the way it works. There's this YouTube star named Ben Eater, B-E-N-E-A-T-E-R, Ben Eater, and he has a really, really great set of videos on quaternions. I highly recommend you watch them. Quaternions are essentially complex numbers. Um, I don't, again, I'm not a mathematician, so I don't know very much about them. All I know is that if you take a derivative of Q with respect to time, you get this equation here. One half this crazy four-dimensional matrix that has all of the angular velocities in it times of quaternions. And I put a red box on it because when I do my numerical integration scheme, I'm going to take that equation, I'm going to drop it into ODE45 or ODE in Python, and I'm going to integrate those equations in Mothin just, just fine. Okay? Uh, so that's all I have to say about quaternions. So let's talk about the dynamics. This is really more parameterization and kinematics. We really care about dynamics. So in, in a couple of videos ago, I said that the sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration. Um, Euler came around, and he took Newton's equations of motion, and he said, well, not only is force equal to mass times acceleration, but moments or torques placed on a, on a system is equal to the time rate of change of angular momentum. And angular momentum is equal to the inertia times the angular velocity. Granted, this assumes you don't have any spinning reaction wheels, but this is a, a simple approximation for now. The total moments placed on the satellite is going to be moments from your reaction wheels, moments from your thrusters, moments from solar radiation pressure, moments from aerodynamics, and moments from magnet torpors. There's a lot in here. For the satellite that uh, South Alabama is currently uh, going to uh, prepare, build, simulate launch is not going to have reaction wheels so we're leaving that off we are going to be around 400 km so aerodynamics is going to be important but we're just going to assume that's some constant bias or some constant noise we aren't going to have thrusters and radiation pressure is so small uh, we don't really care about it same thing with aerodynamics uh, we're going to assume those are just like constant noise on the order of 10 to the minus 3 or 10 to the minus 4 um, force. So we really just care about these magnet torquers, which I'll talk about in another video, and, and then these two terms we're just going to lump into some standard deviation and some bias noise applied to the system. So let's talk about this time rate of change of angular momentum. This time rate of change, whenever you write this, remember I was saying in a couple videos ago that Newton really, really harped on everything needs to be an inertial frame. 
Well, the problem is, is that this body frame is not inertial. The center of mass is not a fixed point. We can make an approximation and say that the earth is fixed. Let's say a reasonable approximation, but saying that the satellite is an inertial frame is a ridiculous approximation. You can't make that approximation anymore. So when you take your derivative, you, have to actually, you actually have to use what's called the derivative transport theorem, which says if you want to take an inertial frame derivative, you have to take a body frame derivative, which says take the derivative assuming the body frame is inertial, but add on this extra term, omega cross h. And so you have to add this term here on the back end. And so if you bring this down one more step, let's assume that the angular momentum vector is in the body frame. Well, then I just need to do the chain rule and say, okay, let's assume I'm deploying solar panels or, or, or probes or communication uh, antenna, whatever. I might have some derivative of, of, of moment of inertia. That's going to be times my angular velocity. And then with the chain rule, I'm going to have plus I times the derivative of angular velocity. And then finally, I just bring this term down plus omega cross H. So this is the right hand side. And that's going to be equal to the left hand side, all of these moments. Uh, keep this in mind, these red boxes here, because when I go and I uh, simulate this on a numerical integrator, I'm going to use this to integrate the quaternions. And then I'm going to use this to integrate the um, angular velocity vector. Okay, that's all I have for this uh, attitude dynamics uh, lecture. And this concludes this sort of first seminar. It's been a couple of videos to get through this, but this concludes the first seminar on uh, spaceflight uh, dynamics, which is translational dynamics, the orbit around the planet. And I, I went over a little bit on orbits and inclination and eccentricity. And then this is the final part on attitude dynamics, which talks about the, the dynamics of the rotating um, space. And at that point, you have everything you need to put a satellite into a given orbit, integrate the rotation, and integrate the orbit itself. Um, and like I said, so you could even skip, skip to the last video in the seminar series and uh, start numerically integrating. Um, I'm actually going to film uh, two more things on on uh, control using B dot controllers on how to detumble a satellite and then on some uh, sequential linear uh, least squares estimation. Um, hope you have a good night and see you in the next video.